Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Today is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving everybody. And today we are going to be uh, looking at the importance of thankfulness. And uh, so before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and sing a song. Today we're going to sing uh, Count Your Blessings. And so I'll bring that up now. Thank you. Okay, and now let's go ahead and pray uh, before we get into the lesson today. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will help us to uh, uh, study your word today and learn something from it. And we pray that you help us to be thankful and, and live a life of uh, thankfulness. And uh, we pray that you'll bless us and thank you for your blessings. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and, um, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about thankfulness. The phrase, give thanks, is found 80 times in the Bible. Also, the word thanksgiving is found a few times in the Bible. And so, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about thankfulness. And thankfulness is very important to God. And uh, Psalms 92.1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So it's, it's good to give thanks unto the Lord. And part of giving thanks is singing praises. And then in Psalms 136, 1, it says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So, you know, God is good to us. He He uh, saved us and he helps us. And then he has mercy on us. And we should be constantly thankful and praising him for all those things. And Jesus put a lot of emphasis on thankfulness. Um... He said uh, in the story where he cleansed the ten lepers, and we'll go ahead and read that now. It's in Luke seventeen eleven, uh, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are all the nine? There are not found that return to give God glory save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So Jesus was uh, traveling and preaching and um, he uh, was going through uh, Jerusalem and Samaria and Galilee there. And uh, as he entered a village, there were these ten lepers, and they asked to be healed. So, uh, you know, Jesus healed them, and well, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And once they started going, uh, he healed them, and only one of them turned back and thanked him for healing him. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew. The Samaritans were outcasts. They were, like, half Jew and half Gentile, and so the... Uh, the uh, people who were 100% Jews, they, you know, they didn't, they didn't like them. They were prejudiced against them. And, um, but it was a Samaritan. Jesus' own people didn't come back and thank him, but the Samaritan did. And Jesus was really surprised and shocked at this, and he was glad that the Samaritan came back and thanked him, but he was also, you know, put out that the other nine who were Jews, they didn't come back and thank him. And, um, so, uh, you know, Jesus told the Samaritan that his faith had made him whole. And, um, so in thankfulness, when Jesus heals us, when Jesus does something for us, we need to be sure that we thank him for it. And that's very important to him. And, um, you know, it's also, uh, his will that we give thanks in everything, um, First Thessalonians 5.18 says that in everything give thanks, well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, you know, in no matter what situation, we always have something to be thankful for. We have the Bible. Um, we have well, we have salvation. We're not going to hell. That's something really good to be thankful for. There's a song out, um, and I, I can't sing it on the video because it's, it's not public domain. It's copywritten. But uh, you can probably find it on YouTube. There's a song out called, um, I'm Not Going to Hell. I love that song. Um, it's, it's a praise to God that, uh, you're saved and you're not going to go to hell. 
Um, so it's a really good song. And that's something to be really thankful for is we're not going to hell because without Jesus, um, you know, we would be. We, You know, if God had to make a way for us to be saved, we'd be going to hell. And if someone had, if God had to, you know, make sure that we had heard the gospel and brought someone into our lives to teach us the gospel, we'd be going to hell. Um, so not going to hell, that's a really important thing to be thankful for. And then, um, you know, uh, God's judgment does fall on people who are not thankful. You look at Romans one twenty one. it says, Because that when they knew, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And Romans chapter 1 goes on to say that, you know, this was these are the heathen people. You know, um, they've been told the gospel. When, during the years of the, uh, you know, Apostle Paul, the gospel went out throughout the whole world, and they've uh, they've been told the gospel. The gospel even got over to America, uh, in, you know, in the first century. Um, they they've got the gospel. They've known the gospel, but they didn't receive it, and they didn't glorify God as God, nor were they thankful. And so. Uh, you know, they became vain in their imaginations, their foolish heart was darkened, and the chapter goes on to say that they, uh, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to commit all kinds of sins, um, but they can still get saved, because just because God turns someone over to a reprobate mind does not mean that they cannot get saved, because the Bible makes it very plain that to do those certain sins that are mentioned in Romans chapter 1, like sodomy and murder and, and stuff, you already have to have a reprobate mind. He turns them over to a reprobate mind to do those things. So someone who does those things already has a reprobate mind. And if they could not get saved, then none of those people get saved. But they can get saved. Um, and uh, it can be very hard because their conscience is sealed with a hot iron. But, you know, it's like if you take a piece of meat and sear it, if you cut down deep enough, the soft spots. So it just takes more work and prayer. To try to get those people saved sometimes. Um, but, you know, if, if not being thankful is a very serious thing and it causes God, you know, to turn lost people over to a reprobate mind, um, you know, and so, and, you know, you know, thankfulness is a very important thing to God. And uh, thankfulness is a part of worship. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And so when we go to church, we're supposed to go in with an attitude and a heart of thanksgiving and praise. And, uh, you know, so yes, when we go to church, we're supposed to go into a heart, an attitude of thanksgiving and praise and that we get to go to church and that uh, we'll, uh, you know, we're able to have access to God through Jesus and we're able to worship him and praise him. And then, uh, thankfulness also brings peace, um, to us. It, it helps us. You look at Colossians 3.15 it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be thankful. So when you're thankful, you know, it gives you peace. And when you have peace, you'll be thankful. They go hand in hand there. And um, now when we give things to God, it's not only just a private prayer where we thank God for things, but we need to publicly thank God for his blessings. We should uh, thank God at church. Uh, Psalms thirty-five, eighteen: I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. So we're supposed to be, you know, show and voice all things to God for the things that he's done for us at church. And then also among Christian friends, when we're out during the week, it says, First uh, Chronicles 16, 8, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. So when God blesses us and does something for us, uh, you know, we need to let people know, hey, God did this for me. You know, if he heals us, uh, if he provides food for us, um, if he provides money for our bills, you know, when God does something for us, we need to be making it known among people what God has done for us. Uh, and then also among the heathen. 
uh, the lost people, the worldly people. Um, Psalms 1849, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Um, so, uh, even among lost people, well, you know, when we go to work and stuff, we should say, you know, uh, God did this for me, and I'm thankful for it. You, you know, you can bring things up in conversation and, um, and sing praises unto his name. And, uh, now, when I, I was young, when I worked at uh, a factory, and I would, I, I could walk, and I would just, I would be singing all day long, and it probably drove people nuts, but I was young, and then that's what I did. Um, and I just sang while I worked all day long, and I was one of the best workers, too, so it didn't interfere with my job. And I would, I would be in that pack, and I'd just be singing all day long. And, um, uh, you know, thinking back, I thought, you know, that probably drove people nuts, but, oh, well. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was happy and thankful, and, and I wanted everybody to, to know it. Um, so, you know, as Christians, that's supposed to be how we are. That's our attitude. Um, and, uh... In addition to thanking God for our basic needs like food, shelter, and clothing, there's some other specific things that we need to thank God for mentioned in the Bible. Um, it says we should thank God for deliverance. So this is in First Chronicles 16.35. It says, And say ye, Save us, O God of all salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. So, so, uh, you know, when God delivers us either from a health problem or a financial situation or from enemies, from persecution, whenever he delivers us, then we need to thank him for that and we need to thank him for openly let people know that he delivered us. And then um, we're also supposed to thank God for Christian friends because that is so important. Life gets very lonely when you are alone and you don't have Christian friends. So... You know, but you should never compromise to make other people like you. Um, but it can be very lonely and hard when you're standing on the word of God and the people who you thought were Christians and your friends end up not being and um, and then they turn away from you. So if you have Christian friends, it's very, uh, you know, you should be very thankful for them because uh, a true Christian friend is extremely hard to find, as I have learned in my life, unfortunately. And um, Ephesians one sixteen says, uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking, and he says that he ceased not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So when we thank God for our Christian friends, we should always pray for them. It's so important to pray for them and hold them in prayer so that God will bless them and they will stay right with God. And... Um, and so it's very important to thank God for Christian friends. Now, also the Bible says that we should thank God for his holiness and faithfulness. This is also very important because if if we couldn't trust God, I mean, we'd be in trouble. If, if God wasn't holy and faithful, if we treated God like so sometimes we treat other people or sometimes the way we, that we, I mean, if God treated us, like uh, we treat other people sometimes, or even the way that we treat God sometimes, man, we'd be in, we'd be in trouble. We'd be, you know. So we really need to be thankful for God's holiness and faithfulness. You know, He always says what He's going to do, and He you know, He always does what He's going to say, or He always does what He says. And um, then uh, you know, He's faithful to us, and He helps us. And Psalms ninety seven twelve says. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. And then Psalms 30, verse 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So we're supposed to remember God's holiness and give thanks for it because, because of God's holiness, he would never do anything to harm us. If God wasn't holy, man, we'd be in trouble because he made us. He's all-powerful. He can do whatever he wants to with us. We'd be, like, enslaved and... And, you know, and uh, tortured. And, I mean, he could do all that, but he's holy and good. And we need to thank him for that holiness and goodness. Um, the way he loves us and he takes care of us and he meets our needs. And he goes, he's constantly going the extra mile for us. And then Hebrews thirteen five. this is very important. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. 
and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, see, this is another place where we need to be thankful for his uh, faithfulness. He, he's with us all the time. If we're saved, then, you know, he, he and his spirit indwells us and he's always there. Uh, if we start to backslide, um, he may get quiet, but he never leaves us. And all we have to do is repent and then he's, you know, he's he's not quiet no more. He's right there and he's uh, helping us. And um, then... Uh, now, this verse also shows that discontentment is unthankfulness. So, if you're not content with what you have, um, if you're complaining and stuff, then that is a spirit of unthankfulness. And um, so, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 8, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. As long as we have food and clothing, you know, be content with that and and be thankful. Um and then First Timothy 6, 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. So, you know, if if you're if you live a holy life and you're content with what you have, that is a that is a great gain. Um, that's better than being a millionaire. Because a lot of people who are millionaires are very miserable and they're lonely and they're not happy and they're because the stuff just never stuff doesn't make you happy. And um so, uh, you know, to to be uh, discontent uh, is to be unthankful. So we need to make sure that we're not complaining and, and that we just trust God to meet our needs and we are thankful. And another thing about thankfulness is when you pray and ask God for something, you know, faith is believing that you're going to receive it. So you can thank God. It's always a good idea to thank God that he's going to give it to you. Um, when you pray for it, like if you, if you're falling, you know, a lot of people are falling on hard times right now. And, um, um, if you're having trouble paying your bills or something, you pay, pray that God provides the money for a bill. Then when you're praying that, say, God, thank you for all your blessings and that you've been taking care of me. I pray that you'll pay this bill and thank you that you're going to be faithful and pay this bill for me because your word says that if we ask, we will receive and it says that you will supply our needs. So when you pray and ask God for things, you know, you can always thank him that he's going to do it. And also it's a good idea to quote scripture to him when you pray. That's that's not a bad thing to do. Um, that's a really good thing to do. Um, because people's like, well, I don't have to quote scripture to God. He knows it all. But he wants to know if we know it. So, you know, quoting scripture when you pray and asking God for something that that's a really good thing to do and also make sure that you go ahead and thank him for it, that he's going to provide it. Um, and then we should also be thankful for God's mercy. I mean, man, if, if we didn't have God's mercy, you know, we'd be going to hell and, and he wouldn't be helping us and it, and it would be all on our own and we would have to, you know, be self-made and all this, you know, people say, well, I, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I'm a self-made millionaire or whatever. Well, not really. God gives you, the even the wicked, God gives them the strength to be able to get wealth and gain. Um, it, it's, it's always God. Uh, they, they didn't make themselves. We never make ourselves. Everything we have is because of God's mercy. And so, it says right here in Lamentations 3.22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. We have to remember, we're human. We're sinners. God is holy. He cannot be around sin. We're only allowed access to God because, you know, he came to earth as Jesus and died for us and shed his blood so we could have access to him. This whole relationship with God, you know, it says God loved us. We, we love God because he first loved us. Our whole relationship with God is instigated by God. If it wasn't for God's mercies, we'd just all be in hell and we'd be miserable. But it's because of God's mercies that we even have any kind of blessings. And that he doesn't absolutely automatically just kill us. Um, I mean, you got to look back at the flood. Man had become so wicked. God was like, man, if I knew that man had be was going to become that wicked, I would have never made them. And at that time, he was going to destroy all the earth and all of mankind. But then he saw Noah, who was trying to serve him and please him. And so he God had 
mercy on Noah and his family, and he told him to build the ark, and he saved him and his family, and we're still here. So if it wasn't for God's mercy, none of us would have been born. Because God was ready to just wipe it all out back about uh, 2,500 years after he made everything because man had become so wicked. And so if it wasn't for God's mercy, we wouldn't have even been born. It would have just all been done away with. Um, and then uh, verse uh, 23, oh, wait, let's see. Lamentations three twenty two through twenty three says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness so God is long suffering and uh, his mercies are new every morning we're not like wearing out running out of his mercy his mercy is new every morning and great is his faithfulness so every day he's like okay I'm going to give them new mercy uh, you know. We're not, you know, you know, we're not wearing out God's mercy. Um, if we're right with Him and trying to serve Him, um, and even with the wicked, He has a much long suffering. You know, I've seen people where it's like, if I was God, they would be dead. They would have been dead a long time ago. And but it's a good thing I'm not God. Everybody be in trouble. <laughs> um, and uh, but God is long suffering, and His mercies are new every morning. And, you know, he has mercy on us, and he has mercy on the wicked. And we really need to be thankful for God's mercy. And um, so thankfulness and thanksgiving is very important in the Bible. And in America, we have thanksgiving because God's people, the Puritans, came over on the Mayflower. And um, that first winter, they, you know, a lot of them died. Because they got, you know, the ship, uh, in like, they had trouble with the ship and got in a storm. And they ended up in the wrong place. They were not supposed to be at Plymouth, Massachusetts. I, I think they were supposed to be in Virginia. And so they ended up in the wrong place. And it was, you know, close to winter. They didn't have time to prepare. Um, you know, they tried to hurry up and get cabins built and stuff. But that first winter, you know, many of them died. And then the next year... God blessed them with, you know, the Indians came and helped them. Esquanto had learned English and actually been to England. And he came and helped them and taught them how to grow food in this new land. Because they had to, uh, you know, feed the ground uh, with fish. Um, and it wasn't the same type of, you couldn't do it like you could in England. It, the land here was different. And so they had to learn how to grow food in this land. And even today, most... Uh, Many uh, good plant fertilizers has fish in it, um, something that we still use today. We just don't actually bury a fish with the food like they did. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, they the that second year, they had the Thanksgiving, and it was a thankfulness to God for providing for them so that that winter they were going to live and survive because they had enough food. And God had brought them through. And they hadn't all died that first winter. Uh, some of them still lived. And um, so the first Thanksgiving in America was concerning, you know, it was a thankfulness to God. I, I've heard that, you know, I didn't go to public school. Um, I'm not involved in the public schools. So everyone, so I don't really know what they teach. And every once in a while I'll hear something because I'm still, I still get information about the homeschool movement and stuff. Um, because I was homeschooled, and that's important to me, even though I don't have children. Um, but I still get information from the, from HSLDA and places, and I've heard recently that the schools are now teaching that Thanksgiving was a, some kind of a festival to celebrate diversity between the pilgrims and the Indians. Well... The pilgrims and the Indians, okay, they were diverse people. They came together. They had a meal. They were friends. But Thanksgiving was thankfulness to, it wasn't a, they, even the, the Indians would be like, what, a cultural diversity festival? That's not what it was. They came together specifically to thank God that they didn't die the first year, and that the second year they won't have enough food to live. 
it was a it was a religious feast of Thanksgiving. Um and in the Bible in the Old Testament the Feast of Tabernacles was uh a feast of Thanksgiving that lasted seven days. Um so, you know, the pilgrims, the Puritans, they were Thanksgiving was a thankfulness to God because, you know, he had provided for them. Um, and uh, so, you know, and children need to be taught that. And there's, you know, a lot of people producing information out and uh, getting that into the hands of people. And there's movements to try to start, you know, people, those different groups like wall builders that works with the public school system trying to get proper history taught in the public schools again um and uh you know but thanksgiving in this country sometimes people call it turkey day um that they, they've so many people have lost the meaning of what thanksgiving truly is it is truly a day that we set aside to thank god for his blessings in our lives and we're supposed to be thankful to god every day um uh, because we're supposed to live a life of thankfulness but it's important that we set aside a day to be thankful for God. And Thanksgiving will, you know, I will always uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, even in the future when, um, you know, uh, when we, my brother and I go to Israel and we do our walk there, um, we're still going to celebrate Thanksgiving because it's not just an American holiday. It's a religious holiday. It's a, it's a Christian holiday. Um, so we would always, we will always keep Thanksgiving. Um, and, uh, but yes, uh, Thanksgiving is very important to God. Giving the Lord, give thanks is in the Bible over 80 times. And God puts a lot of emphasis on it. So as we go out through our day and we enjoy our turkey and eat too much. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, some people watch football. Some people watch the parade. And uh, other people watch different Thanksgiving movies. But as you go throughout your day and you enjoy this Thanksgiving day, remember to be think that the focus is to be thankful to God for his blessings in your life. And one of the main things that I am thankful for this year is that Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, there's still a huge fight concerning abortion in different places, especially in New York and California. And... um. And a judge, I think, in Kentucky has blocked the law. And so there's still a huge fight. But on a national level, you know, Roe v. Wade was overturned, which I find that completely astounding that that happened during while well, we have such a liberal president. Um, but it happened because Trump put the proper judges in place. So thank God that he did that. And now I've heard that he's running again, and uh, God has told us that you know, we've asked God about it, and he has told us that, yes, we are supposed to uh, support him. So that's what we will do. And um, and uh, so, you know, hopefully he'll win again and other things. But maybe he can do more to advance uh, pro-life measures in the states um, somehow. And um, with the compartmentalizing of all government, you know, the president is limited in his power. He's not a king to where he can just decree it. Um, but he can walk, uh, he can influence, and he can walk through courts. And that that's what Trump did, is he put in proper judges, and they were able to overturn Roe v. Wade. And that was a real blessing. And millions and millions of lives of babies have been saved now. Like in the state of Tennessee, it's... Um, it's pretty much outlawed. There's, like, the exception for life of the mother uh, and, like, severe health and stuff. Um, and I found actual um, evidence in the Bible that that's, that's that's not as bad as, like, abortion on demand. Um, now, I, God showed me that the Christians never did it because you had uh, Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. Um Phineas's wife died giving birth to Ichabod. Um, so God's people have never sacrificed the baby for the mother. Um, it's always been the other way around. Uh, but there is a verse in Isaiah 43. Uh, it says, Thou shalt be judged as women who break wedlock 
and shed blood on judge. So that is more about the abortion on demand. Um, where they all just, they break wedlock, they are just out sinning, and then they shed blood, they kill the baby because they don't want the responsibility. So, the Bible says that women like that are judged, and if you keep reading that chapter, it shows that they're supposed to be put to death if they are that way. If they're just, it's not a health reason, it's not a life reason, they're just evil like that. Um, they're actually supposed to be put to death. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's really good that Roe v. Wade was overturned because, you know, a lot of women in America, um, the, you know, was deceived. Um, they, you know, they were lied to and told it wasn't a human, so they didn't know that they were committing murder. Um, and they were deceived and lied to, and it was a really, and there was so much trauma, and then it caused men to be able to enslave women and force them to have abortions. And so, you know, it's really good that that was done away with. And that is what I am most thankful for this year. And then, too, that even through all of the problems in the country, you know, God has provided our needs and taken care of us uh, surprisingly sometimes. I didn't know how God was going to come through for us a few weeks ago. And the way he did it astounded me. Uh, he came through for us. And, um, but God is faithful and and he's, you know, and he's moving in the world and in the political arena, even though it's a huge fight. Um, and, you know, America and the future is in God's hands. And I pray every day for it. And he is going to, uh, his will is going to be done. And I'm just thankful that it looks like it's his will for it to be turned around. Uh, to maybe where, you know, all laws can become more righteous. Because, you know, Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, and then we just took over the House. The Senate is still up in the air, but we did take the House back. So, God is moving. And I'm just thankful for that. Um, because we don't want to lose our freedoms. And we don't want a country whose laws are promoting things that God calls abominations, like abortion. And um, that would God, cause God's judgment to fall on us. Um and so, you know, it's very important to be thankful to God and, you know, just uh, spend today being thankful to God and blessing him. And um, we'll uh, go ahead and pray and then we'll dismiss. And so we'll go ahead and close in prayer and then I will do the Aaronic blessing over you in Hebrew and then in English as found in the Bible in number 6, 24 through 26. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. Thank you for this Thanksgiving day and help us to go throughout this day remembering you and uh, your blessings and your provision and your providence in our lives and in the world. And uh, we thank you for all your blessings and I personally thank you that Roe v. Wade was overturned this year and, um, and I thank you that Trump is running for president again and that uh, you have told us that we all to support him and that, it, you know, you have a plan to save America. And I thank you for that. And we pray that you will uh, bless us as we go through this week and through our lives. And we will remember to thank, be thankful. Uh, and when we pray, we will be thankful um, for your blessings. And uh, thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. And, okay, uh, Ya Barakaka Adonai Bayish Merika Ya El Adonai Panav Aleka Riku Naka Yisa Adonai Panav Aleka Bayasim Laka Shalom The Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you uh for watching this week's um uh Bible study and I hope you have a very blessed week. And please join us again next week and uh, for another Bible study. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.